My I don't, guys. I don't know how it's pronounced. Say your name. Ca- uh, Say your joining name. us now, the general manager of the Houston Texans. Nick Casario. Casario. Yeah. Casario? Casario. Ben said. Oh. Tom Brady said Sussario. He, he yeah. doesn't know. Yeah, we'll have a long conversation with him about that, but that's okay. Yeah, let him <laughs> have it. Let him have it. GM of the Houston Texans. Uh, so what you've been able to do over the last year with a rookie head coach and a rookie quarterback, and obviously no other pieces were made, just those two, yep. the only change, now is going to give unrealistic expectations to every other team in the league whenever they're down. Could you have fathomed that this quickly the culture would have turned like that with D'Amico and CJ seemingly? That's the way the NFL works, right? The expectations go through the roof. But, no, I think, you know, we're very fortunate and excited about the opportunity in front of us. I think it all starts with people. we got a lot of great people starting with D'Amico. I mean, you guys have talked to D'Amico. You guys have talked to CJ and Will. I mean, they're great people. D'Amico, I mean, can't say enough about the job that he did this year, who he is as a person, how authentic he is, the way the players respond to him, the way his energy permeates the entire building. It starts at the top and it trickles down, and it's our responsibility to support, you know, him and the players and just give them the resource they needed. And, you know, all the credit goes to the players and the coaches for the work that they put in this year. Hey, thank you for taking time to talk to us right now. You bet. Uh, This is awesome that you're doing this. So there was – and the boys are going to have questions because we've covered your team. Yeah. I don't know if you've got to hear it. I know, hey, we got blinders on and shit. We've talked a lot about your you team. You want to talk to me? I, you just talked to The Rock, so I don't know how I fall in Pretty a cool. pecking order. The Rock actually that. got booked on our show by The Rock. Right yeah. right so that, that, was a, that was a cool moment there. <laughs> but there was, a, there was a C2 test during this last draft process for C.J. Stroud. When did you know? Now, granted, the Bryce Young hype was happening before you, so you didn't know. At what point did you know C.J. Stroud was the right guy? And what was all that shit going into the draft? How, how do you kind of compartmentalize all that? Yeah, it's twofold. So I think sometimes there's narratives that get created for whatever the reason, and it's, it's not fair to the players. And honestly, it's not fair to the companies involved either because I think they're actually a pretty reputable company. have done a lot of work in a lot of different industries. So... Again, what we have to do is just sort through information and is figure out, like, all right, what's the right information, what's the accurate information, make our own assessment. Because in the end, we can rely on all these this data, all these other sources. But in the end, we're the ones that have to make the decision. And when the player comes in our building, we have to understand what we think we're getting in the player. So I would say we went through March, and then as we got into April, and then we had, you know, CJ in the building. We had a lot of people in our building. And the more time we spent with him, the more I would say he's – He's very confident and self-assured, and he believes in himself. And I would say he's very he, – he can – again, some people might not be able to handle that, right, when you have a self-assured, self-confident player. But he cares about winning. He cares about being great. And he cares about work. And he wants to be coached. And he, there, he just had something about him. When you sit in a room like this, we brought him in. When we do our visits – we actually put them in a room like there's 30, 40 members of the entire staff. So you kind of get to feel for what you're going to deal with on a day-to-day basis. And there's other players. And the way he handled himself, I mean, it's not an easy environment to be in, right? We try to put him in some uncomfortable situations. But I would say he's unapologetically who he is in himself. And that's real. And it's awesome. And I think you saw that. And look. You guys know. I mean, you guys have been in the locker room. Players know. Players are smart. They know what it feels like. Terry's been in an AJ. Been, I mean, you know what it's like. So when a guy walks in, don't try to be anything else other than who you are because that's good enough. And I would say what CJ has is damn good enough. And, you know, I think we all reaping the benefits of that. Yeah, hell yeah. We are his fans as well because getting a chance to watch him has been remarkable. I'm happy to hear that about the, him showing up and just always being himself, being something that you take into consideration whenever you're trying to pick somebody because it feels like the more and more bullshit is being used for why people are drafted and not drafted. That seems to make sense over there. Debo's oh, yeah. got a question for so, you. So uh, speaking on that, I had a chance to spend some time, a lot of time with Drake. May um, yesterday, and when you speak about uncomfortable environments, it was golf, so it was pretty comfortable. But some other things, you see him show up, you see him how he reacts, how he interacts with you know his family and other things like that. How much does that weigh in into that decision? Obviously, you're drafting the franchise guy, and talent is one thing, but you're sitting there in the two pick. You know, you got AR there, you got Levis there, you got all these guys there. How much does that factor into that decision as the decision maker? Yeah, DB, everything. You factor everything in yeah. because that is emblematic of who they are. Yeah. So the way they were raised, who they are around, what they believe in, what's important to them, how they interact with their teammates, how they are on the sideline during the course of the game. Do they handle their emotions? Can they? So we're looking at everything, but who they are as people, in the end, this is a people business. Yep. Like we can say all, whatever we want to say, but it's a people business. You want to get the right people with the right mindset, and you want them to be 
who they are. And I think the thing about D'Amico, that's the thing about our building. The players can be who they are. We're not going to force them to be a certain way. They just be who the hell you are. Yep. That's going to be good enough. But I would say how you were raised, where you come from, what were your circumstances, that's part of our responsibility to understand that. And you can't use something against a, pl a player if yeah. that's what it is. So we have to figure out, okay, that makes sense. And in the end, like I said a little bit earlier, are you comfortable with that or are you not? And then ultimately you got to make a decision. And again, coach has been in a draft room as well. Like, yep. You're not going to be, it's a 50-50 proposition, right? So even if you think you are right and you know what you're getting, there's so many other things that come along with it that you don't know how they're going to react or respond. So we're there to help. We're there to support. We're there to nurture. We want them to succeed, and that's all we can really do. But yeah. to your question, like you have to, you look, you factor everything in. That's yeah. part of our job and responsibility. Caring about culture is a big deal. Yeah. You know, like caring about, and seemingly you guys down there got everybody that's like a Texan. Like you have yeah. a culture and identity. D'Amico has it, and the boys absolutely love it. Go ahead, Tony. Yeah, building off that, we saw you on the uh, sidelines pregame national championship, yeah. getting eyes on all the boys. Boys, um, like, do you can you draft someone off of just tape, or do you have to meet them in person to make sure that they do fit your culture? Or is how does that work? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. So everything is kind of a part of the evaluation. So what you ultimately how they play on the field is important. But I think the one thing that you have to we're all learning is look when they get back when we get them they're almost starting from scratch. So. What sure. happened in there, it's a credit to them. No one can take it from them. When they come in the building, all right, then we kind of have to restart and reset a little bit. So you're trying to get them in as many environments, many opportunities. You see them play. Are they at an all-star game? You can visit them in the combine. You bring them in the building. You go work them out. You, there, maybe there's some other things that you do with them to see. And you're looking for consistency across you know, different you know, layers of it. Do they act one way here and then they go over there? I mean, I was in, I've been in a building. This happened in New England a couple of times. Oh, yeah. Had a player. one way with a coach. All right, then he's in the dining room. Uh -huh. And a staff member says, well, this guy, it's like, wait a minute. Like, are you getting consistent behavior on a day-to-day -day basis? So, again, that's part of our job and responsibility. It's not we're trying to play gotcha. We're just trying to say, what do we have? Are we comfortable with it? Do we believe in it? And it's going to be good enough. Why don't you get out of the AFC South? <laughs> <laughs> everything I'm hearing, right? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, everything yeah. there like, makes sense. This all seems like common sense. Rude. Yeah, we should take into how he's treating like the kitchen staff versus how he's treating everybody else. That might be an indicator. How he yeah. treats the Pat McAfee staff when he sure. comes on the show. Like, uh, that's yeah. going to be important. Uh, that shouldn't matter. But do, does it suck that you're in the Colts division? <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you think about that? You know, because I'm thinking about the other way around. <laughs> like, it's not great that C.J. Stroud is only going to get better. No. It's not great that D'Amico Ryans is only going to cultivate the culture even more. Like, I don't love that. And, uh, yeah, you ever think about, like, trading yourself? <laughs> sure. <laughs> You ever think about doing That's that? It's not up to me. That's up to ownership. So they want to <laughs> ship me somewhere else. So we've had many battles in the AFC South. But I would say, in all seriousness, what the Colts have done, they've done a great job with the program. I thought Shane did a great job this year. Jags, too. I mean, we got Trevor Lawrence is young. It's but... a competitive division. I think young. it's probably more competitive and young. And Look. This league is littered with good players and good coaches. I mean, that's the reality of it. So you can go on down you know, rosters, divisions. It's competition. And what are you doing on the margins to maybe put yourself in a position? Because the league is designed, everybody is probably going to lose six or seven games a year, so, right? So can you kind of put yourself to me have a few less? But it's so damn competitive. There's too many damn good players, and there's too many damn good coaches. So, you know, again, we have a lot of respect for our, the competition. And each year is going to be different. And... What happened this year is great, but nobody can take that from us, but we're kind of starting over here, you know, for 2024 season. We're so thankful that your team and you have been so good to us. We appreciate you. I've heard you had a take on WWE. <laughs> All right, he does. Here we go. Really? It is the story. Yeah, Rock, Rock right here. Rock right here. Rock right here. Rock what do you want to say? You want you want a Cody Rhodes Cody? try, baby? Uh, I, no, I look. I, I don't. I'm not part of the casting. Uh, so I just like watching. So I'm not worried about who's bitching and moaning about you oh. know who the fans want. So okay. that's ultimately going to be up to Triple H and what he decides. Oh, he so wants you follow? To... You follow? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm immersed in WWE. I was a big, honestly, I was a big fan growing up as a kid. Probably had a window there where I wasn't following as much. But 
I kind of, you know, keep tabs. It's kind of my release away from, oh, that's from awesome. football. So wow, get out of the Asian. That's what so a awesome. weapon! That was so awesome. Nick, were you the GM that said Braves is too big and too <laughs> intimidating? Yeah, was that you? We heard about. I'm sorry, you with all due respect, whoever said that, it's, it's <laughs> at, you know, it's asinine. Yes. What you know, but maybe somebody did say it. I don't know. Look, if they did, Boozed they up. just don't want to own it. You know, so like, look, I mean, Mike's a great coach. I mean, you guys have had Mike on. I got a lot of respect and admiration for Mike. Talking about a, co- a damn good coach, like. But Mike, if he, yeah. if somebody was to walk in. And you got the Miko for the next 20 years, which sucks yeah. for the Colts. Absolutely sucks. But if you're interviewing for coaches, somebody walks in and they got three tins of Zin in their <laughs> mouth. Okay. They got Zin here, Zin here, two vapes, yep. Marlboro cigarette, yep. Reds. Reds, Reds, one packed in the yep. yeah. uh, tucked in, and then maybe a beer as well comes in. That's not a turnoff? <laughs> I'd probably give him ashtray number one, number two, probably give him a cup for his dip spit. <laughs> this guy knows. Yeah, coach. Oh, yeah. That's, what I'm yeah. that's good. That's, oh, understanding yeah. your, uh, that's understanding your talent. Hey, we appreciate the hell out of you, man. I appreciate you guys. Good Thanks luck the rest of the way. Me. Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, Nick Casario. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.